Welcome to this first video in a two video series on freshwater resources and water pollution. In this video, we'll focus on freshwater as a resource. The learning targets for this video vary broadly to assess the importance of water to life, diagram the hydrological cycle showing the various compartments and processes, to demonstrate the flow of water through natural systems, and we're going to use Florida as an example. To evaluate the importance of groundwater, again, we'll use Florida as an example, and to recognize and evaluate the impact of humans on managing the flow of water, and we'll use Florida as an example again. In the picture here, you can see a satellite image of Lake Okeechobee. So a little bit about the importance of water or fun water facts. In fact, only about 1% of Earth's total water is available for human use. And you can see this diagram here that shows up in many textbooks and other places in a variety of formats, and it describes for us all of the water on Earth's surface, which is made up of 97.5% seawater, in other words, salt water, and 2.5% fresh water. Of that 2.5% that is fresh water, almost 2%, 1.97%, is in the ice caps or in glaciers. About half a percent is in groundwater. And other water, so lakes, rivers, soil moisture, even water in the atmosphere, only totals up to 3 one hundredths of a percent. Of that water that's available for human use, it's distributed unevenly across the globe. And by 2025, up to two-thirds of the world's population will live in water-stressed conditions. There will be wars, or there are already wars, over freshwater resources. More than 650 million people live currently without adequate access to water. And developing countries often lack safe water or the infrastructure to provide it. The United Nations Development Program offers programs to develop water infrastructure. In this slide, we can see diagrams of the hydrologic cycle and of the groundwater cycle. In the top right corner, we see the familiar cycle of water as it cycles from water bodies through to the atmosphere, back to the surface, and into the groundwater system. In the bottom left corner, we see a diagram showing the groundwater system. This isn't as familiar to us. In fact, the groundwater system begins when water infiltrates the surface, and it fills up or recharges aquifers that might exist under the surface. So in this case, we show an aquifer that is an unconfined aquifer, one where water can recharge freely from the surface. And we show a confined aquifer beneath this brown layer, or this brown impermeable aquaclude layer. Sometimes lakes or rivers intersect with aquifers and they become a portion of the uh, underground groundwater system. We'll talk more in the next video about groundwater and problems with groundwater contamination. In this video, we'll focus the rest of our attention on water resource problems for surface water. And they come in three types. The first one is when you have too much water and that leads to flooding. So this can be a case where river banks overflow where uh, trees have been removed and replaced by paved areas, or where buildings have been constructed on floodplains. In the top diagram, we see a natural flow system. So we have precipitation coming down on the system, and of that 100% of the water that hits the surface, about 50% of it should infiltrate into the system and become part of the groundwater system. About 10% of it should run off and flow into rivers or lakes, and about 40% of it should be returned to the atmosphere by evapotranspiration. But what we see, in fact, in urban areas is that there's been an interruption to this cycle. So of the 100% of the precipitation that falls, only about 15% is infiltrating the surface because it's been paved over or built over and we see a significant increase to about 55% in the amount of runoff and a decrease in evapotranspiration because many of the plants has, have been removed. In this slide, we'll start our little case study of Florida. We're talking here about situations where there is too little water, which leads to aquifer depletion. Aquifer depletion occurs when the recharge of an aquifer is slower than the withdrawal rate 
of groundwater from the aquifer. It's common in arid and semi-arid regions or where irrigation is needed to increase agricultural productivity. So in the case of Florida, you can see in the darker colors, so the blues or the reds or the yellows here, that the recharge is actually in the negative, indicating that the aquifers are being depleted in the central and northern portions of the state. In the southern portion of the state, we're right about zero to slightly negative in terms of recharge relative to withdrawal. The picture in the bottom right shows groundwater withdrawals by each county, and it shows it in millions of gallons per day. And you'll notice here that in the areas where population is the most dense, so in South Florida, in the Central Florida corridor, that's where groundwater withdrawal is the highest. Moving on to thinking about poor water quality, the third of the water resource problems. In the situation of our case study of Florida, that occurs in particular when there is saltwater intrusion, which can occur in coastal areas. Saltwater intrusion is the flow of seawater into a depleted freshwater system. So we'll start with the top picture here that shows the Miami-Dade Water and Sewer Department's water cycle. And we'll start on the west side, so the uphill side, if there is such a thing, the uphill side of this water cycle. The water cycle begins with precipitation that falls into the Everglades and flows down into the south part of Florida, and it ends up in this Biscayne Aquifer. There are several wells drilled into the Biscayne Aquifer from which drinking water and municipal water are retrieved. That water, because of the gradient, is flowing toward the east in this area, and it's flowing out toward the ocean. So it flows underneath residential areas in Western Dade County, and it flows underneath the city of Miami. It flows under the intercoastal waterway under Miami Beach and out into the ocean or into Biscayne Bay, where it's evaporated and the cycle starts over again. You'll notice that there is a confining layer, an impermeable aquaclude beneath the Biscayne Aquifer, and below that is a deeper Floridian Aquifer. So how does saltwater intrusion happen? Let's go to the picture in the bottom left. We can see the well field and this Biscayne Aquifer at the top that's fed from water coming down through the Everglades. But water being removed there is pulling that water in from the east side. And so it opens up the opportunity for salt water from Biscayne Bay to start to intrude. Now that salt water is denser than the fresh water. So the diagram to the right shows us in some contours the salt concentration of water in that aquifer at depth. So going from west on the left side to east on the right side, we see that the concentration of salt water becomes progressively higher. And with depth, the concentration becomes progressively higher. So that salt water that's intruding is uh, staying low in the aquifer beneath the fresh water but it is in fact pushing in from the east, from Biscayne Bay, toward the west. There are also global concerns with groundwater withdrawals and with supply. In this map of the world, you can see in the darker red and orange colors, areas where there is already extremely high stress on the groundwater supply, and areas where there is increasing stress on the groundwater supply. You can see that this is a global problem, however, it is specific to certain regions. And it is exasperated by climate events which disrupt stable water supplies, by the increases in population and land development, and also remember that pollution contaminates existing water supply and thus causes the impact to be greater. So I think we can go back and review our learning targets now and get off to our mastery quiz. The learning targets were to assess the importance of water to life, to diagram the hydrologic cycle, to demonstrate the flow of water through natural systems, evaluating the importance of groundwater, and recognizing and evaluating the impact of humans on managing groundwater flow in Florida. Go ahead and take your mastery check quiz, and I'll see you in class.